I permadeath Zelda games, and after each Zelda game that I permadeath, I like to rank the dungeons and bosses in the game. Well, I've already done two. Actually, I've done three permadeaths, but I only have two rankings. Skyward Sword and Minish Cap. Where's the Ocarina of Time one? Well, I'm glad you clicked on this video because today I'm going to give you my honest opinion about Ocarina of Time. So I hope you enjoy. The first dungeon in Ocarina of Time. The Deku Tree Dungeon. And honestly, there isn't much to say about this dungeon. It's what you'd expect from a first dungeon in a game. You get thrown into the game, you're about 20 minutes in, and you're in a dungeon. And honestly, this is a great starter dungeon. And I honestly enjoyed it. I did it a lot during my permadeath run. And... The boss fight is awesome, but we'll talk about that later. So I will officially rank this one a B on my list. And this is because it's the first dungeon in the game. And honestly, it's very simple. There's not a lot to it. So B it is. Let's get on to the next one. Dodongo's Cavern is another one of those dungeons that I actually really enjoyed. I did play through it a lot just like the other one because the first two or three dungeons I got through a lot and usually after I would die and that's when I would reset. But Overall, the Dongo's Cavern is a very good dungeon. The Lafalsos, as you can see, are a fun fight and show up a few times during the dungeon. One of my favorite items is the bombs, and you actually get it in this dungeon. You also have to go between two different floors to find different items and get to different areas, which is another cool thing about this dungeon. So, I'm going to have to give this a B as well. Just like the first dungeon, it's kind of simple, and you can get through it really fast once you know how to do it well. And it can get boring when you have to keep going, going, and going through it. So, B it is. The last dungeon of the first three of the game. Inside Jabu Jabu's belly. And I'm going to be honest with you, this dungeon, honestly, I did not like very much. This dungeon was always one of the ones that was just tedious, that I'd just get over. It's short, there's not a lot to do in there, and it's just weird. So, I just never really enjoyed going through this one, because it was shorter than the first two, like I said before, and it's just inside it's just weird it just gives you that weird feeling so i'm gonna rank inside jabu jabu's belly as a d now this is where the temples start to get good the forest temple the first dungeon you do as an adult and honestly this dungeon is really really good i really like the idea of going around finding four little poses before you can actually go to the boss fight and the little bosses in the rooms like these ones are actually hard, difficult bosses that you have to pay attention to defeat them. All the little puzzles and everything you do around the dungeon honestly just make me excited to go back when I have to go back to the dungeon. It's a dungeon that I look forward to, but as a ranking, it's not my favorite dungeon. So that's why I rank it an A. Because it's a well-off dungeon and actually really good dungeon. I always enjoy it. The Fire Temple is honestly another amazing temple you do as an adult. It is confusing. The first time I ever played this game, I actually got stuck on the Fire Temple for a couple of weeks or months or something. But going back and replaying through the game, it honestly wasn't too bad. The hardest part was trying to get the hammer on this little staircase that you just saw. Frick that part, dude. Frick that part. But overall, the dungeon honestly isn't the most fun to play through. Even though it is an amazing dungeon, it's just very repetitive. Going, getting all the Gorons, flipping the switches, and just saving them. It gets really repetitive and kind of annoying. So that's why I'm going to rank this dungeon a C. Do I even need to explain myself on this dungeon? Like, literally. Do I need to explain it? Do you like this dungeon? Because if you do, let me know in the comments. Because you're weird. You're weird. You. You're weird. This dungeon literally makes no sense. I've played this game like four times and still got lost in this freaking dungeon. And yes, I know four times isn't a lot, but still, after four times, you should know what to do. Like, seriously. If you don't get the keys in the right order, the dungeon isn't even possible. Who does that to a Zelda player? So of course you already know, this dungeon's an F. Put it in the freaking F tier. Put it down there. The only thing that was good about this dungeon was the Darkling fight. That fight is good, like always. Even the boss fight sucks, but that's coming for later, like... Mood next dungeon, please. Bottom of the well. It's not really a dungeon in my opinion. It's just a little mini dungeon. But, you know, we'll count it. Whatever. It's on the list. So, the mini dungeon, bottom of the well. Honestly, very creepy, very short, and very memorable because of that guy that just died. And you just get the lens of truth. Honestly, that's it. So, honestly, I'm going to rank this dungeon a D. Because, honestly, I don't even really consider it a dungeon. So, next one. We are down to our four last dungeons, and we are on a banger dungeon, the Shadow Temple. And oh boy, let me tell ya, 
I love this dungeon. Dungeon I always look forward to when I play Ocarina of Time. It's the most memorable in my opinion. I think it's just an amazing dungeon. The enemies are good. The layout's good. Using the Lens of Truth and the Hover Boots together to get over areas. Whew! And then that boat ride at the end. Yes. And a lot of people ask me what my favorite dungeon is in Ocarina of Time. And I'll just be honest with you right now. It's this one. And that's why I'm going to put it at a freaking S tier. This dungeon is top tier. It's just... Whew, I totally recommend playing through this dungeon. Because it's just one of my favorite. And why wouldn't you just listen to a random guy on YouTube? Which, by the way, if you're here, why not hit that subscribe button? We're close to 1k. Help us hit it. The Desert Coliseum is honestly a dungeon that I kind of forgot about when I was permadeathing this game. It is a very cool dungeon that you have to play through as a kid and an adult, which is honestly a really cool aspect of this dungeon, and I really like it. And honestly, one of my favorite parts of this dungeon, which is actually kind of surprising, is the Dark Nut fights as a kid. Yes, they scare the freaking crap out of you. Because you're a kid, and you're fighting this Dark Nut, and they can literally, like, two-tap you. And they're scary, but it's a fun part of the game, you know? Put some scary stuff in there. Let's do it. So, I'm gonna rank this dungeon an A, because it's another really fun dungeon to play through, and you get the mirror shield, which I mean, another good item. Oh wait, I almost forgot. The part before the water temple, the iced cavern, yeah, frick that thing. Put it in F as well. Put it in F as well. We don't even need a sun- We don't even need a section on that. Get moving. Go, 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 go. Final dungeon of Ocarina of Time. Inside Ganon's castle. And honestly, this dungeon, I mean, it's cool. It's cool. But, like what most people complain about, it's just a repeat of all the other dungeons. So, I feel like it can be really repetitive. And that's why I'm not going to be ranking it as high as a lot of people think. Because a lot of people like this dungeon. But honestly, I think it's repetitive. So I think it deserves a place in B. Because the Forest Temple and the Desert Coliseum, I just feel like are better dungeons. And of course, you know, the Shadow Temple. <laughs> the best dungeon. I feel like those three are better than Ganon's Castle. But Ganon's Castle honestly isn't that bad. So that's why I'm putting it in B. We've officially finished ranking all the dungeons in Ocarina of Time. So now let's move on to the bosses. Because... Those are the best parts of the dungeons. The ending of the dungeon. The place you end off the dungeon. Let's go! Queen Goma is honestly a good fight to end off the first dungeon in the game. Not too hard. And honestly, when you speedrun a lot, it gets super simple. I could defeat it super, super fast. So, Queen Goma, short and sweet. I'm going to put it in a B because it's honestly not a bad fight. And I think it's a good one to start off the game. King Dodongo Dongo is honestly another one of those fights that is honestly really simple. You just throw the bomb in his mouth, jump attack three times and he's dead. And there's not much to the fight other than throwing bombs and hitting with your sword. So that's why I'm going to put King Dodongo Dongo in a C. Because honestly, he's an easy fight. The dungeon is good. The fight honestly isn't that good. So I think it deserves a C. Barnade honestly saves Jabu Jabu's dungeon. Like I said before, Jabu Jabu's stomach honestly isn't a very good dungeon. It's super short, and I just don't think it's very fun. This boss fight, on the other hand, is very fun, and it's actually pretty challenging. If you are a new player and don't know what you are doing, this boss fight is very challenging. And that is why I really like this boss fight. So, I'm going to give it an A, because I think it's not an S tier, but it's an A tier boss. Phantom Ganon is honestly a super amazing fight. That ends off an amazing temple but i'm gonna be honest with you when i was doing my permadeath run phantom ganon ended my run at least four times i could just not get the volley part down it wasn't until i got the big goron sword till i was actually able to defeat him but my hatred aside from him i think it's a great boss and a great way to end a great temple so that's why i'm gonna give it an a as well because it's a great boss fight and really fun i'll be honest with you vulgaria was a fight that i dreaded the whole permadeath because Holy crap, this dragon can do half your health in damage. So during my permadeath run, I was freaking freaked out because I didn't want to die to him. But overall, this boss fight was very confusing, but honestly a great boss fight. I do really like it, but it is hard and challenging. And for the Fire Temple dungeon, I think it's actually a really good one. So I'm going to put it as B because I don't think it's an A tier dungeon, but I think it's a B tier. Morpha. I mean, what is there to say about Morpha? Comes from a terrible dungeon. Boss fight in terrible dungeon is a terrible boss fight. Honestly, Dark Link is a better boss fight than this. Throw it an F, dude. Throw it an F with the dungeon. Screw this thing. 
Bongo Bongo comes after a really good dungeon. In my opinion, the best dungeon in Ocarina of Time. So, to me, this boss had a lot of pressure riding on it. And, let me tell you right now, Nintendo did an amazing job on Bongo Bongo. It is a scary idea of a guy that doesn't have a head with two hands that just tries to grab you and throw you around. And, it's a really hard boss fight. It was one of the bosses that I was most scared to go fight in my permadeath run. And all around, it's just a great end to the best dungeon in the game, in my opinion, of course. So that's why I'm going to throw it in the S tier, because it's another amazing boss fight. Clean. Twin Roba is a cool concept of fighting a boss, where the first phase you fight two different witches that both shoot weird laser ice and fire things and you have to hit the other one with it i don't know it was confusing at first but i finally figured it out and i was able to get it then you go to the second phase where you fight i don't even know what her name is but she is interesting and honestly always made me uncomfortable when i fought her but that aside i honestly don't think this boss fight is too bad and i think it's actually pretty good so i'm gonna throw it in the a because i think it's a decent boss fight and it's pretty fun the Ganondorf fight at the top of his tower is honestly another really good boss. It's one of the ones where I really struggle with because I suck at volleying. I don't know what it is. I just, I, I almost lost this whole permadeath because of this fight. I can just not parry for the life of me, but that is okay because honestly, this fight is very good. It's another really nice fight. And I honestly think it's one of the best in the game. It's hard, not super easy, which should be what the final boss is. And honestly, I think this should be the only boss fight because I think... I think Ganon is honestly not that hard, so I'm going to rank this one an S as well. We got two S's on this category because this boss fight is honestly really, really good. Ganon, one of the most recognizable boss fights in the Zelda franchise because it's a good one and it's the end of Ocarina of Time, which everyone loves Ocarina of Time. Well, not everyone, but most people do. I think the Ganon fight, like I said previously, should have been the second to last boss fight because I think the one in the tower was harder than this one and honestly, I thought it was better, but that's just me. So I think this one deserves an A, not an S because the one before this was a better boss fight. And that was my honest ranking about the bosses and the dungeons in Ocarina of Time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did and you made it here, why not subscribe? We are really close to 1K and I'd really like to hit 1K soon. And if you like this video, you'd probably like my other two rankings. So you can click these two videos right here to go find them. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.